When we talk about the autonomic nervous system, we're talking about the automatic nervous system. And up to this point, we've been talking about the somatic nervous system. So that was the nervous system involved in moving us in more of a conscious control scenario. And the autonomic system is going to be more of an autopilot. And so when we look at the two different components of the autonomic nervous system, we see that it's comprised of parasympathetic and sympathetic. And a couple of things to keep in mind here. One is that the sympathetic nervous system is what we might call the life or death or the fight or flight response or nervous system. And the parasympathetic would be the resting and digesting, the everyday life kinds of things having nothing to do with immediate life or death scenarios. And so that's concept number one. Concept number two is that both of these cannot be in charge at the same time. You can have one or you can have the other, but you can't have full functionality of both at the same time. I guess a third criteria we might throw in there is that the sympathetic system is much more powerful and much more rapid in its response in doing what it does, and the parasympathetic is not quite as aggressive and it's a little bit slower in doing what it does. So let's get into that. If we look at the way the systems are wired, this starts to explain why there's a speed of operation difference. If we look at the parasympathetic, remember that was the resting and digesting, most control of the body is coming out of the brainstem there and then branching its way out to the rest of the body. But the sympathetic system has its own set of wires that travel outside the spinal cord and help to innervate the different parts of the body more in line with where they're actually at. So this means there's a dedicated high-speed wiring system that is only available to the life or death response system. And that's relevant because if you don't rapidly do whatever it is you do to survive a life or death scenario, then you're going to die. So it has to be rapid. Let's say it this way. If the sympathetic activates, very quickly it turns off the parasympathetic. So it turns off the resting and digesting things that you had before, and it will then turn on the emergency response, the survive when things hit the fan kind of reaction. And so let's look at it this way. Here's the parasympathetic system with that mostly branching out of the brainstem idea. And we can trickle on out. And let's say to the heart, the parasympathetic could possibly speed up the heart rate a little bit, but it's going to be more heavily involved in slowing down heart rate. It would run the salivary glands, it would run the lungs and breathing rate to a certain degree, but again more of a slowing down effect than a speeding up effect. Uh, liver and stomach, pancreas, intestines, those would be in uh, digestive functions, and then we get down to reproductive functions. And we can also throw the immune system in here. So all the stuff you need, just as a normal part of being alive and doing what you do as a living person, is a parasympathetic function. Obviously some of those functions would not be relevant to a life or death reaction, while others would. So if we're talking about heart function and lung function, vision, those sorts of things clearly are significant for a life or death scenario. But reproduction, digestion, and the immune system, just to name a few, isn't really that important right this moment. The body says, if we don't need it to survive right this moment, we're going to turn it off. And later we'll come back if things allow us and turn it back on and finish it. But for now, we're going to divert all that available energy to something else. So what you see the parasympathetic controlling here and having the effects that it has, these things can also be acted on by the sympathetic. And here's that special set of wiring, the sympathetic trunk ganglion, and basically running down alongside the, the spinal column and vertebrae here, having its own set of wires. So these would go out directly and plug into things that need to either speed up or to slow down based on that emergency response. So if we look at the wiring here, we can see that it goes to all the same places that the parasympathetic did, but it's going to have a different functionality. If the parasympathetic was mostly focused on slowing down heart rate and breathing rate, the sympathetic division would be focused almost exclusively on speeding it up. If the 
Parasympathetic was focused on telling the immune, the, or the immune system, the reproductive system, and the digestive system to do their job to function. The sympathetic division is going to come along and tell them to turn off. And so there's going to be this antagonistic response between the two. Whatever one turns on, the other one turns off. And the sympathetic can very quickly turn off the parasympathetic. But we said because the parasympathetic works more slowly and its signaling is not as intense, it's going to take a while for it to come along and turn off the sympathetic. In this case, that would mean turn back on digestion in the immune system and reproduction, slow down heart rate, slow down breathing rate, and those things. And it can do that, but it's going to be relatively slow. So let's say you're walking along and somebody jumps out from around the corner and yells boo in your face. How long did it take the life or death response to turn on? How long did it take for your heart rate to go up? Your breathing rate to go up? Actually, your vision to improve? Temporarily, blood sugar levels are going to spike to help feed this fight or this flight as part of this system. And at the same time, digestion turned off, reproduction turned off, immune system turned off. How long did that take? It was a matter of a second or two, and all that was accomplished. Once you've determined that it wasn't really a true life or death scenario, and you'll often find your body overreacts, and often it didn't need to respond as a life or death scenario, but it does. And we can say stress is interpreted by the body as a life or death response, which means if you're chronically stressed, you have chronic suppression of your digestive, reproductive, and immune systems, and that can be a problem. But if they've been activated and you decide that it wasn't something that really needed that response, then the parasympathetic, or rather the sympathetic, slowly slows down its activation of these things or suppression of these things, and the parasympathetic division slowly takes back over. So if your heart rate and breathing rate went up in a matter of a second or two, it might take on the order of minutes for it to slow back down to its resting rate. So that's an example of very rapidly doing something with the sympathetic and very slowly undoing that with the parasympathetic. Let's think about that stress thing just for a minute because I would propose that more people in the United States die of stress-related issues than of any other particular cause. Think of all the different things that cause you stress. School, work, bosses, money, children, family, especially the in-law side of things. Uh, the list goes on and on on the different things that cause us stress, and it would take us perhaps a couple of hours to sort out all those different things. And any of those things, when they come along, that triggers, again, this sympathetic life-or-death response. So if you have lots of stress in your life, that means your digestive system is not working to full capacity. Reproductive system, eh, not working to full capacity. An immune system, certainly not. So what you often find is that if someone's experienced chronic stress, so let's say this semester. For me, this semester's been uh, in some ways relaxing, in some ways more stressful than normal. But overall, it probably averages out. But for some of you, your life might have changed a lot more than mine did. So you might have even more stress. And so let's say you've been operating on this ultra-stressful environment for about eight weeks now, and then let's say the stress ends because the semester's over, at least the stress that was caused by this class. If in general your stress declined, up to this point you'd been running on adrenaline because adrenaline is the neurotransmitter of the sympathetic system, and it has a stimulatory effect on most parts, but in the case of the digestion, reproduction, and the immune, it's been the uh, suppression. And so now you've been running on eight weeks of suppressed immune system. You've been making it because you've got that adrenaline pushing you along. But when the adrenaline crashes, and again, the parasympathetic in this case will take a couple of weeks to get back in control of the immune system and get it back up to par again, what you'll find is that perhaps two weeks after the end of a stressor, you might get sick. And that's because your immune system was suppressed to the point that it wasn't overly functional. And then in the aftermath of that suppression, you're vulnerable as the system tries to build itself back up. The longer and bigger that stressor has been, the bigger the crash will be afterwards.
this is not the time in people's experience where they want to think about their immune system being compromised and then crashing, but that's the reality of the situation. Let's talk briefly about the reproductive system. And this is one of the most significant and noticed examples of this interaction between sympathetic and parasympathetic, but it's one of the least recognized. You see it, you know it happens, but you don't really know what's causing it. And so that comes in from the reproductive system standpoint. So let's talk about an erection. For a female, erection of the clitoris is irrelevant to the reproductive function and experience. From the male perspective, erection is a do or don't do. It's a reproductive system might work or reproductive system won't work perspective. So a female can ovulate eggs with no erection of the clitoris, with no orgasm, with no pleasure, with no nothing involved in the process. So none of those things are required for the female side of reproduction. But from the male side of reproduction, erection is obviously critical. Otherwise, if you don't have erection, you will not get ejaculation. So you won't get sperm release. The parasympathetic, so the resting and digesting, is responsible for achieving and maintaining an erection. So achieving and maintaining erection is considered a resting and digesting an everyday function. So that means that in this case the parasympathetic is having a stimulatory effect on the reproductive genitalia. But it's not an immediate. It's something that takes a couple of minutes to really kick in and do its thing. And so that means an erection doesn't go from zero to a hundred immediately. It takes a minute or two perhaps and in some cases a little bit longer than that for it to be achieved. And then to be maintained, you need continued stimulation of the penis. But if you have then this resting and digesting gives you the erection, what actually stimulates ejaculation is the sympathetic division. So let's think about this for a second. Getting and maintaining an erection is a, life, is a resting and digesting, a parasympathetic function. Ejaculation is a life or death function. It's a sympathetic function. And we've already said over and over, they both can't be running at the same time. When one turns on, it turns off the functionality of the other one. So that means when the sympathetic division triggers an erection, or triggers rather an ejaculation, sorry, that turns off the parasympathetic function of achieving and maintaining an erection. So this means ejaculation stops the erection. And that happens, like we've said with how quickly the sympathetic works, that works pretty quickly. And perhaps far more quickly you would see that erection go away than you saw it be achieved in the first place because the two systems just work at different speeds. And this also explains why a male is not capable typically of back-to-back -back orgasms. In this case that would also mean back-to-back -back ejaculations because there's that refractory period in which the erection causing functions from the parasympathetic are turned off and just like with recovering from being jumped out in your face or otherwise being startled it takes in the case of this functionality anywhere between a couple of minutes to a couple of hours for the parasympathetic to take back over and restore its ability to produce another erection. And because the female orgasm had nothing to do with erection or no erection, then the female's uh, ability for back-to-back -back orgas orgasms and the need for a recovery period is non-significant. It's not involved at all in the female functionality because the erection or no erection wasn't relevant. And so that's something that most everybody probably has observed and noticed, but didn't necessarily realize exactly what was going on there. So that's just a fight between the resting and digesting and the life or death sy systems as to who's in charge now, who gets to be in charge later, and how long it goes between the two. All these other systems work in that same general way as well. And the general idea is if you're life and deathing, then non-essential stuff gets turned off. Once the life or deathing is over, then the non-essential 
can turn back on. And remember, non-essential means non-essential right this moment. If it can be put off till later, that's non-essential. Long term, you would need it, but right now, for this moment, for a second or two, or perhaps for even days or weeks, you can do without some things, and so that's what happens. Table 14.5 is a list of different organs of the body and then some of the effects that the parasympathetic and the sympathetic can have. And across the, the list we see here, if, if the parasympathetic stimulates, then the sympathetic will uh, undo that. If the parasympathetic suppresses, then the sympathetic will activate. So they constantly are counteracting each other for that process. And she can go through that list there and see some interesting things throughout the body. If we look at the overall autonomic nervous system, we can see different levels of control here. We have the limbic system which if you recall from an earlier chapter is the emotional system and the higher level thought processes system. It's going to be involved in this process obviously when you're analyzing how you feel about something and whether or not that's determined as life or death or not. Then we go down to the hypothalamus and it sort of coordinates this whole mess which then goes down to the brainstem and gets involved in pupil size, heart rate, blood pressure, how fast you're breathing, that sort of thing. And that will then tra trail down to the spinal cord, where that will get involved in urination, defecation, erection, ejaculation, and all the other good stuff farther out in the system. So the point here is multiple levels or points of control, and each level has its own significant contribution to the system. Let's very briefly talk about autonomic neuropathy. Autonomic neuropathy is when the neurons of the autonomic system start to be, experience damage and start to die, really. And that's often an effect of diabetes. So diabetes likes to come along and really mess up the nerves involved in this system. And so that means the overall interaction between sympathetic and parasympathetic gets messed up. You don't get the proper reactions at the proper times. And so all these things that are supposed to be stimulated, or they're supposed to be inhibited, get out of whack and, and out of balance. So and that's another example of diabetes doing so much more than just being a blood sugar slightly out of whack situation. The fact that the blood sugar does get out of whack starts destroying everything from top to bottom. Hopefully you found this topic, while it was fairly short, interesting, informative, and hopefully it all made sense. Have a good day. We'll see you next time.